Take three Gen Xers, give them a topic about music, movies, pop culture, or whatever, and how it relates to them growing up in the 70s and 80s as part of Generation X, add one person from another generation to see if there's any common ground, and you've got Solve for Gen X, starting now. Just go. for a through line between episodes, yeah. I am now dressed as a baseball coach oh. for my audition today. <laughs> he has another commercial audition today. All right, well, that's a Broncos jacket and that's i know but one thing that i know it's sports that's been and it's a denver nuggets hat but i mean all right it's just but sports you do gear. look like a bit ba- i'm not a, a baseball, like baseball i'm not a baseball guy so i don't have any baseball i do have a rockies hat. oh don't I let them don't, don't come in and say that hat. yeah i'll pull out my rockies hat yeah no i'll pretend like i'm a big baseball guy yeah Solve for Gen X. I'm Ashley. I'm Nate. I'm Matt. Oh, oh, shoot. No, it was really good. It was, it was super fun. It was yeah, like that was great. one on top of each other. We yeah, were that was great. becoming masters. Uh, we are. And this week, what we're talking about <laughs> is the movie you can quote on your deathbed. And since I'm the one that uh, I'm hosting this week, I'll start. So mine is pretty predictable if you know me. Uh, it is the 1987 Coen Brothers classic, Raising Arizona. Oh, wow. Their sophomore That's effort. Great. Raising Arizona is insanely quotable. Yes. It's very funny. Yes. It's very weird. I definitely, I, I'm pretty sure I first saw it. It came out in 1987. Uh, I did not see it at the movie theater, but it weirdly ran. Like we had a movie theater in our town. Our town was not that big. But Holly Hunter is from my hometown. Holly Hunter, who played mm. Ed, um, Edwina, short for Edwina, in the movie. Mm. Um, uh, and so I think that's why it was at the theater. Because it's not like it had some huge release. This was the Coen Brothers' second movie. So Blood Simple was the first movie, which was this like very dark, uh, I don't, maybe not noirish, but it was very like a darker not really comedic movie and then this was like went as far away from that as humanly possible uh nicholas cage stars as h.i mcdonough uh who ends up who is a like constantly being arrested criminal who ends up with a police officer ed mcdonough and uh repeat offender <laughs> yes uh we were released on our own recognizance <laughs> Yes, uh, that's a that's a John Goodman John Goodman line, I believe. Um, yeah, it's so funny and so weird. I'm pretty sure I rented it at Blockbuster Video for the first time that I saw it, and then when I got to college, my the person that ended up being kind of my boyfriend for most of college, a guy named Joseph, uh, he loved it too. And I don't remember if I showed it to him or if he had already seen it, and that was like part of our bonding. I honestly, can't remember anymore. But we were obsessed. We would quote it constantly. We watched it all the time. I remember when we, I think it was when we were living in New York. We, You know how sometimes they would, on the street, there would be like somebody with a table with like screenplays oh, yeah. laid out. And you yeah. could buy one. He bought yes. the screenplay of it. Yeah. Which like who knows, like you know, <clears throat> who knows where those things come from. And like probably like the first three pages are like somebody typed it out. And then the rest of it is just like, you know, an old <laughs> paper about Freud or something. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. This isn't. <laughs> but like, first of all, I was so excited because it was Holly Hunter was from my hometown. It was this big movie that she was in. Uh, and she then was very shortly after that in broadcast news where she was nominated for an Oscar. So I was super into Holly Hunter, super obs- obsessed with her. But this movie was so funny. Frances McDormand is in it. She has some of the most quotable lines. Did you get the dip tat? You got to get the dip tat. <laughs> <laughs> One yeah. of our, she has so many good ones but um yeah it's just funny and weird and quirky there's like son you got a panty on your head <laughs> when he I goes in line. to he's wearing a panty hose yeah. on his head to steal uh rob a convenience store 
it, it, just everything about it is funny. And there's like a furniture owner named Nathan Arizona, and he owns a furniture store called uh, Nathan Arizona. <laughs> Um, unpainted Arizona. Unpainted, unpainted, unpainted it, Arizona. It yes, yes. And it, if you if you can find it for uh, a cheaper price, then my name ain't Nathan Arizona. Uh, there's so many uh, Nathan Junior. So and then Nathan Junior is the baby. Nathan Junior is the baby. They end up stealing and raising Arizona. Spoiler alert for a 40 year old movie. Yeah. Uh, that is the a main plot point. Is they're not able to have children, so they decide these people have uh, quintuplets. I think. Um, and they decide to steal one of the babies, which is a very funny scene with Nicolas Cage uh, sneaking in. But mighty fine he is. <laughs> I think I got the best one. <laughs> and then she she holds him. She goes, I love him so much. Yeah. Why ain't you breastfeeding? You appear to be capable. <laughs> That's when uh, the convict John Goodman and the other guy God. come in. They're eating mighty good cereal uh. flakes, Mrs. McDonough. <laughs> Eating breakfast. You really could quote it. That's great. I, got, that's, I know that's a amazing. lot of it. I, I really do. Like it's. And thinking back, I do. There are so many lines that are. I mean, every. Single well, you word haven't even hardly spoken. done any of the Nick Cage ones. Oh God! And yeah, he has so many. There, he's. The doctor said her insides were like a rocky place where my seed could find seed no could purchase. Find no purchase. <laughs> <laughs> I use that a lot. Still. Yes, in my that is so uh, great. It's, there's. I gotta think of what that one is that you're talking I about. I don't particularly appreciate. I don't particularly. <laughs> I don't particularly think that... Yeah. Something. Something, yeah. Oh, there's another good Frances McDormand one. I'll just do this last one, because this was one that I used to do all the time. And she's like, she's in the middle of talking to her. You gotta get the dip tat. I mean, you can you can skip the something, but uh, I can't remember. But anyway, you can put his thumb in iodine and skip the orthodonture, but you gotta get that dip tat. <laughs> Ronnie, take that diaper off your head. Put it back on your sister. <laughs> I've done that a thousand times in my life. That's so great. <laughs> she's just like, so... Because they have those horrible children... <sighs> The one yes. that like writes fart on the wall, like, hey, <laughs> Raleigh, he already, Raleigh, there's a smart one. He already knows his ABCs. Look live. And he throws rocks out of the dad <laughs> guy. And then he's like yeah. written fart on their paneling of their uh, wall. Uh, it's so great. Oh my I think gosh. I loved to do in college and people would like ask me to do it was there's this lullaby that she's, that Holly Hunter sings to the baby at one point. And it's like one of these like old like Appalachian like story songs where it was like the way they would pass news around and so I'll do like a little bit of it. it's like her father sits at his cabin door wiping his tear brimmed eyes for his only son soon shall walk through yonder scaffold rise. So that's like just the beginning of the song. But mm. the song is basically about a guy who, ki- like the end of the song is like, for I did murder that dear little girl whose name was Rose Connolly. <laughs> it's like you're singing a lullaby about like a murder and then the son is being killed for murdering this girl. <laughs> Oh, what a what that a music, dumb thing! The music in the throughout the great. thing music, is amazing. It's, and a lot of it is that theme too. Like a lot of that, yes. the instrumental becomes Ooh. that. It's so great. Uh, Would you say this is your favorite Coen Brothers movie? I would have said that for a long time. I think it was. I don't I, think it is anymore. What? Supplant? Plant it. It's hard to say. I really love Fargo. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I really love No Country for Old Men. Like, I just well, think they got better at making... It's a really, really, really good movie. But I think, like... I don't know. I think they made better movies. So when you ask that question, I'm not really asking... Do you think that is their the best movie they've ever made? I'm asking, is that your favorite? Is that the favorite movie? Maybe. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Because I, like I think it really is two different questions. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, for me, it is my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Like, I could watch that movie more times than any of their other movies. Uh, it's just so absurd and ridiculous, and uh, I mean, and memorable and quotable and li- light. I mean, but it also there's like emotion in it. I mean, oh, there's like sure. real emotion that I love. I mean, I probably haven't <laughs> watched it in like ten or fifteen years. It's been a minute since uh, I've watched it. There's something it, but, uh, about like great. a movie maker's sophomore effort that I often feel is mm. their best 
cleanest, like, best, most consumable kind of movie. I wonder if, is Boogie Nights Paul Thomas Anderson's second movie? I think it is. For sure not That's his first. One of my faves. Maybe his second. For sure not his first. Um, I think Pulp Fiction from Tarantino is mm. like, if I have to choose one of his movies, that's the one. I agree with you. I mean, just even the storytelling and the, yeah. I mean, every, all the elements, the actors, the writing, the music, the, the jokes, look of it. Everything. The there's there's everything so much. So there's good. a lot of humor it's in like, Pulp Fiction. In a second effort, yeah. you have, I think the, the key, the formula is on a sophomore, you know, project, you have, all of a sudden you have the, the means to do, to mm -hmm. really fulfill your vision, but you still have enough people like holding you back from going too far or too <laughs> or becoming too um, um, indulgent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then, yeah. like later, Paul Thomas Anderson, like I like um, what's the Magnolia. What? Magnolia. I like Magnolia, but to me, it's a little indulgent. Like it's a little long. It's a little bit like somebody needed to say, "Hey, maybe maybe scale it back a little bit or something." You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, there's so many movies that I could quote on my deathbed. I don't know that I could quote like that. Like that is so so rich. Like you know that movie so well, and so when you say them, I kind of go, "Oh yeah, there's those are some great quotes." I just I um, I get as I get older, I think I remember less. Oh, for so sure. I feel like some of those things that I did know, I feel like have faded away. So mm -hmm. maybe I should write down the quotes, or maybe I maybe I should die sooner, <laughs> so at least I remember. <laughs> Well, now you'll have, have a shot at remembering. Now you'll have this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, that's good. So there's like a bunch of things that flash through my head, and I don't know why Raising Arizona wasn't one of them because I do adore that movie, and I and it's and I do know some quotes from it. I mean, I thought of like The Wizard of Oz, and um, but like weird quote, not the normal ones, like Who rang that bell? <laughs> or just weird quotes, not ones that mean anything. <clears throat> uh, or um, when I was in high school, I do remember going to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show with some friends, like a midnight showing, and I kind of became a little obsessed with it. And I went out and got the the audience participation uh, <laughs> CD. I see what you, you did know. there. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Uh, and so I like knew that. And then I almost like for a while, I knew that movie kind of word for word, word along with the the audience participation stuff. <clears throat> and then I, uh, so then there's that. So Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then Monty Python. I was I discovered them around right. like yeah. high school. High school. I fell in love with them. I just thought about that just a little bit ago. Oh man, I forgot about their that. humor, the ridiculousness, and like I could definitely quote mm -hmm. Holy Grail for a long time. Oh yeah, um, and Life of Brian. Oh yeah, yeah. But but I'll say there are two. I think that I probably quote the most. And, and they both have to do with my family. So uh, my whole family quotes this movie, and each of them could probably quote this movie <laughs> on their deathbed. That's horrible. Uh, but <clears throat> it's a wonderful life because uh, That's a good we have one. this tradition. We all, like Christmas Eve night, we're all sitting around together watching. We just did it this, this Christmas Eve. And they're also not the most probably well-known quotes, or maybe they are, I don't know. But... Um, it's not like, I wish I had a million dollars. Hot dog. It's not that. And it's not like, uh, hee haw. It's not that. But things like, um, this is probably a little more common one, but help you down. That. <laughs> um, uh, Merry Christmas to you from jail. That is said from my family a lot. Uh, Jack, my son Jack, who's 22, he has two favorite things that like make him laugh when they are said one of them is um i'm just your little rent collector it's no skin off my nose which happens <laughs> three quarters of the way in where um one some his little guy is talking to uh what's his name um uh potter yeah uh -huh. the, uh, the other one is uh when the guardian angel clarence uh is t yelling after jim uh jimmy stewart and saying uh she's just about to close the library <laughs> That, that quote, Jack just like bursts out laughing just because of the way it is yeah. proclaimed in the film. Clarence so, has such a funny voice. That guy, oh, he does. Uh, that yeah. actor. But the movie I would quote on my deathbed, it is, I'm going to say a couple of quotes from it. Now, you may, you may know these, Fun but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm not going to try to do any character stuff. Okay. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Anything yet? Think about it. Here's another one. 
who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Now that really... The first one really got me. Oh, I feel like I know what it is. Here's another one. The Matrix? No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Would somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? Wait, is this the Big Lebowski? No, nope. no, no, no. The bi- oh god, this is another that find, is the one. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Oh, this is Star Wars. Or it, yes, it is Star is Wars. It, is yes, it the first Star one Wars. New, uh, it's new the hope? first one that I will only call Star Wars. I'm not going to yeah. call it a New Hope. <laughs> as a Gen Star Xer, Wars. it is your right to just call it Star Wars. Yeah, that's what I knew it as. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some gr- really great quotes in there. Um, I originally saw Star Wars in 1977, of course. It was at the Glenwood Theater in Overland Park, which was like the really fancy theater. Um, It's gone now. And I had the Story of Star Wars album, which also... (laughs) God, and you still have it in the plastic. So the album, The Story of Star Wars, is it... What is it? It's It's like a narrated... Uh, uh, it's a narrated story album, and, but it uses the actual film and the words and like the actors. It's like lifted it's not from the, the movie. Film. Did it have it's a just, book? It Did it have a it book is. that came with it? No. Oh no. I mean, it's it's like it is the. It's the it audio is, of the movie. Yes, and then like oh. every once in a while they'll say Princess Leia aboard the starship, oh. and like it'll it'll have wow. a little bit of narration with it. Oh. And I remember where the skips were. Like, I remember that, like, as I'd heard it so many times, it burned into my memory. But um, there is one quote that is used most often in my household by only me. And it is whenever anybody in my family says, that's impossible, which happens more often than you think. So when that happens, somebody says, that's impossible. Ten out of ten times, I will quote Luke Skywalker from Star Wars saying... It's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. They're not much bigger than t- two meters. <laughs> That's what I always say. I fluffed it up there. But They must love that. Well, <laughs> it, this happens multiple times a year, and it, always with my kids. Usually they just kind of roll their eyes, but Jack does appreciate it. Like oh, I don't think nice. he's setting me up to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just yeah. happens. And so that's probably the thing that I, that's probably the quote that I would quote from my deathbed is, it's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. They're not much bigger (laughs) than two meters. That's fantastic. Wow. Mm. That is so great. That's, that is a very iconically Gen X movie to quote on your deathbed. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably first choice, but you know what? That's me. I think that's great. I think it's perfect. It's so awesome. good. So, okay, we've got a very quintessential Gen X pick from Matt for the movie Quote on Your Deathbed. Uh, I think, like, kind of a cool pick for me with Raising Arizona. Like, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. off the beaten path. Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I hate to brag, but it's true. Is it bragging when it's true? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's just truth telling. Um, uh, and so we got to hear from Nate. What right. will he bring to us? Something basic. <laughs> oh, the lesson, the lesson from on this podcast, as we accumulate them and do more and more, will be that Matt and Ashley are interesting people, <laughs> no, and Nate is no. basic. That is not true. No, yeah, what are basic. you talking about? <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark was a big one for me, um, and um, I can quote. A lot of stuff in that movie, and I like the the it's a wonderful life stuff from you, Matt, because it's like you're quoting stuff that isn't like like oh that's a, the famous quote from that movie kind of stuff. I love that kind of thing. Um, I loved uh, Raised Lost Ark so much, and we loved my friend Ben and I used to, we like the the smaller parts or whatever. Like the guy who comes into Marion's bar. Like the the Nazi, right? He's like, he is Freudine. Let me show you what yes. we are used to dealing with. <laughs> Nick! <laughs> One day, my friend Ben and I decided to dress up as that character. He had this fedora hat and okay. a tie and uh, the fire, the like the fire, not the poker, like, but the thing when you grab the, the wood log from the fireplace. It's like a little grabber. With like oh, yeah. a, a little pink sock that... <laughs> to like double at, and then glasses Excellent. like the Nazi war and, and the, the the lighting of this photo is <laughs> hor- horrific yeah. it's yeah. so dark well and, and remember it's like taken on a real camera too yeah um 
So anyway, it's Halloween. No, what, what? it was just like I had to. It was a Tuesday. I had probably I had the fedora and because I used to love hats. I still love hats. Um, I had the fedora and then we saw that I probably just got done watching the movie and saw my parents fireplace thing. It's like, let's pretend like we're that guy. And uh, what year is that movie? Like 80, 81, 81. There you 81. go. So I was like 10 years old. Um but that's not the one, really. Um, then, like, the next movie that I think is, like, impactful to me that I could quote is the movie Meatballs. Meatballs! I'm just talking about meatballs. And so many yeah. of these movies are, like, have a very common thread. Not Raiders of Lost Ark. Uh, you know, in Star Wars 2, you know, I you know, I was big. I love Star Wars. Um, um, the common thread in some of these movies are, like, Harold Ramis, Bill Murray... You know, it's like all these comedy people. Um, mm. uh, and then, like, with Ghostbusters, it's like... And then Ivan Reitman does quite a bit of, like, movies. Has done quite a few movies that I can just quote. Yeah. And then, like, there's Vac- Vacation, like Harold Ramis, John... Mm. And then also, like, The Breakfast Club and all of... Um, what's his name's John movie? Hughes. John Hughes movies. John Hughes. John Hughes also wrote Vacation, right? Um, yeah. So there's all these movies to choose from, right? Um, I th- And then there's the, then there's the Mel Brooks movies. Blazing Saddles and History of the World Part yeah. One. I can quote all those movies like pretty much back and forth. Uh, more of the Dan Agar, like Spies Like Us, um, Modern Problems, Doctor? which is, is that Chevy Chase. Doctor? Yeah, Doctor. Modern Problems is Chevy Chase. Uh, Spies Like Us is like the Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd. The movie was I think Dan Aykroyd wrote it, orig- and Harold Ramis probably wrote it together. I'm not sure. Dan Aykroyd for sure wrote mm. it. With the idea that John Belushi was going to star in it with him, but then John Belushi died, so Chevy Chase uh, stepped in. Um, and same thing with Ghostbusters, right? Bill Murray mm-hmm. took John Belushi's part in Ghostbusters. I like watching those movies sometimes and like thinking about John Belushi in his line deliveries. I can totally see it. Oh, he seems yeah. much different than a Dan, than a John, than a uh, Bill Murray or uh, Chevy Absolutely. Chase. Absolutely. But then when you watch yeah. the movie and hear the lines, you're like, "Oh wait!" But I, John Belushi could totally read those lines and in a way that would be different and still very interesting. You know. Uh, uh. Just as a side note here, just because I know Nate really well, when he was in, I believe, sixth grade for a book report. Which, like, people in my sixth grade are like reading *Banicula* or something like the the, the, <laughs> okay. the vampire bunny. Yep. Story. He read Wired, which was the uh, Woodward yeah. biography, the Bob Woodward biography of John Belushi, and that was what yeah. he did his book report. On. Sixth grade. Yeah. Sixth well, grade. it's like when you the kind of book report where, like, instead of like a the book report is like a form you fill out. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and like, it's like, what did you learn from this book? And my <laughs> takeaway was some drugs aren't as dangerous as I thought they were. <laughs> teacher wants their sixth grader to write remember this is like just say no era (laughs) yeah where it's like they told us that if we even think about using a drug we will die you're gonna die so to me it's like oh you mean you can use heroin more than once (laughs) like you can smoke marijuana without dying immediately uh which was a really a bad thing that they did because it really like in our generation i think it really planted a seed of distrust for oh, sure. people in official capacities telling us stuff. Well, I didn't mean to sidetrack us that much. No, but no, just, but it's, just your it's, obsession with John Belushi that's started. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good, it's a good you know, discussion to have more since you know, Gen X kind yeah. of... Was John Belushi your favorite, if you had to pick a favorite? For like, SNL just people? In or general, just, like, just like no, in general, was, those comedians of that time, were you like, well, John well, Belushi's my John Belushi, favorite. it changed. Initially, it was John <clears throat> Belushi because, uh, when, you know, when I was very young, I'd stay up late enough to, my parents would watch SNL or whatever, and mm. then Blues Brothers, again, a movie that I could quote, oh, yeah. right? Um, but, uh, and then, like, for Saturday Night Live, like, I was in junior high during the Martin Short uh, season. Mm. So I could do every Martin Short impression and was Ed Grimley for Halloween like several years in a row. Oh, and also Bill Murray, right? Uh, yeah. Was a real favorite of mine too because Stripes and Meatballs. Mm. I, my friend Ben and I would watch Meatballs in sixth grade. We'd go home and watch Meatballs every day after school. Nice. Um, but Chevy Chase would probably be my, my favorite. The, the, the least likable. And then that leads me to the movie I have to pick would be Fletch. <laughs> like of all of I, for them, For some right? reason, I thought I was like, "Where's Fletch?" That really is the one I could probably quote the best. 
and have quoted the most. For sure. And would, like, if I had to choose, like, oh, here's a movie, well, there's a, like, what movie do you want to watch right now? It'd be Fletch. Overall, you know, over all those others, probably. Also, you've probably been characters from Fletch more for Halloween than any other movie. <laughs> well, as an adult, yeah, like one year is like, oh, you know what? It would be fun. Like every year, I'm going to go as a different Fletch, Fletch character. character. So he was G. Gordon <laughs> oh Liddy, the uh, airplane mechanic. <laughs> Fletch in the uh, in the Lakers. I'm Doctor John Cock. Toast Doc, and Doc, 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 Okay, Doc, that's what it is. I was like, there's know, a doctor um, or something he says. What was it? I can't oh, remember. No, it's uh, Dr. Rosen Penis. <laughs> Oh, that's Dr. Rosen. Yeah. Dr. John, Rosen Rosen? John Cocteau. Yeah, it's Dr. Rosen Rosen. Oh, come on, guys. It's all ball bearings these days. Maybe you need to refresh your course. Ha! <laughs> I gotta watch that movie again because it is, he is he is so oh good in that movie. He is so good. <laughs> It's just like, uh, and I, you know, the, one uh, of the best lines in that movie, and I, I've turned it into a meme sense, and I shouldn't be online ever, like, talking to people who are <laughs> crazy and insane. That's yeah. true. But, like, yeah, when yeah. someone does say something, like, replies to a, a post I make or something, uh, that's something like, I don't know, I like to put the meme of Chevy's like, God, I admire you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the one for the lady right. with the, the guy with the thing. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's such a so, good, like, I don't know, something uh, about it. It's just such a great cool. cut. Like yeah. burn, like. But it's but the words seem to be. No, I know. Positive. It is the sort of thing like, and, and in the scene, of course, the person is like, "So you take that to your people at the <laughs> God." I admire you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that's like, uh, you know, Chevy? Or is that something that feels like the character that was written in those books? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's Chevy. Let's like see. it's improvised. I want to see who scripted. wrote Fletch. If I have that down. Um, yeah, just I don't, curious. Oh, to see written by like Andrew Bergman. Written by Andrew Bergman, who uh, wrote Blazing Saddles. The yeah. in, uh, co-wrote Blazing Saddles with yeah. Bell Brooks and yeah. Richard Pryor, and The In-Laws, and The Freshman, and Striptease. Oddly. Huh. huh. Um, but the in-laws I love, the freshmen, Blazing Saddles, of course. Oh my god! So I don't know if that. I honestly, I would love to see like a real script, not just the teleplay, but the real yeah. script of Fletch the movie to see like what was improvised and what wasn't. And honestly, I don't even know like how great of an improviser Chevy is necessarily. Hmm. I know like they always say that like the scene with uh, Chevy and Bill Murray in Caddyshack, it's like they had shot the whole movie and they're like, oh my God, we don't have a scene with Chevy Chase and Bill Murray together. So they just threw them in that room together. And um, yeah. this is where it's like Chevy Chase hits the golf ball into Bill Murray's like hovel, yeah. basically. Yeah. And he's like, do you mind I if I play a... through? And Bill Murray's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, I have to admit, I have never seen Chevy so, uh, uh, Caddyshack. Oh You've never God. seen Caddyshack? No, I don't know why. Oh, you I should seen... watch it. Yeah. It's it's I don't know how meatballs. it stands up, but uh, um, oh, Meatballs is funny too. It's not as funny as Caddyshack. Caddyshack is pretty uh, funny. I don't it's know how the, I've escaped. The main that. problem I have with that whole era of movies is they cast these really funny men, really funny, and then the women they get are like clearly not comedic actors. They're sort of like just hotties. Occasionally they will yeah. have like an actual comedic actress, but it's and they are all these just very objectified no like meat on the bone in terms of literally their physiques and their <laughs> and are expected to <laughs> yeah. do nudity yeah. and they have to do a lot well, of nudity yeah. and it's like it's very that ethos of like the 70s and and you know like oh these are guy movies they're very much guy yeah. movies but I will say, if which you is can, why I'm basic. If you can divorce yourself from that and watch it, there's a lot of funny stuff, which I can because I like to laugh more than I like to hate. Put that on my epitaph. <laughs> That's pretty Wait, good. Wait, on my uh, tombstone. I don't. Is that the same thing? I'd love like to come yeah. use the pool sometime. Yeah. <laughs> come on, we use. We got a pool and a pond. Pond, pond to be good for you. Uh, yeah, the pool, the pool. <laughs> pond, pool, anything uh, really. You gotta watch uh, it. I'll get Jack to watch it with me because he's definitely not seen it and he would probably love it. Oh my god, it is. And it is. It. Talk about a quotable movie. I think uh, Fletch is not basic to me. I don't think. No. I don't know that a lot of people know that movie. Maybe is that wrong. true? People my age do. Yeah. Dudes my age know that right. movie. For right. Sure. All right. Well, I'm your maybe, age. Maybe I do know wrong. that movie. Maybe I'm wrong. No. But I don't. Know. Yeah, I'm always surprised when younger people don't know movies like when i would do teach improv and the students were 10 to 20 years younger than me um uh, i would always just be like flabbergasted the movies they didn't know i got know? like genuinely annoyed yeah. the other day when someone did not know 
who Barney Fife was. And then I was like, okay, calm down. Don Knotts, still nothing. And I was just like, and you want to do comedy? You purport to want to do comedy? Interesting. You should look him up. Like I was Mr. Furley on Three's Company. I was genuinely furious. I was just like, oh, Not he's Mr. just sort of the comedic genius of our time that laid the groundwork for most of the comedy you enjoy today. But yeah, <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so bad. I, it just happened one day when I became the old guy, right? Um, yeah. But like, I remember taking a screenwriting class with uh, Michael Showalter, who I can't say enough nice things about, um, and we watched his film. Uh, one of his films uh, when we, we during the class just because he wanted to show us examples of like structure and the stuff. Stand, was it? the the it's like a person's name. It's the something. The yeah, I'm I'm embarrassed. I'll I don't know up. the name of the movie, but um, uh, and there's a scene in the movie where and before the scene goes like he's like he point he, he turns to me and he's like Nate, you'll appreciate this part, and then it's him. Uh, about to do something, and he goes, "This is crazy! This is crazy! This is crazy!" Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh which like, is a uh, yeah. That's and it's just like place. at the time, I was like, "Oh, I should have been like glad that Showalter was trying to bond with me." But really, what I thought was like, "Oh, I'm old. <laughs> like, I'm the only person in this class. <laughs> oh, you're the only one that he's gonna know. Uh, I'm the only person the in this class who knows what that what what that quote is from." When you are improving with younger people. And do they bring up references that are like, you're like, I don't know what that means, but that must mean something. How do you deal with that? If it's uh, like for a, a long time, I knew nothing matter? about Harry Potter. <clears throat> okay. And so if Harry Potter came up in an improv show, I would figure out a way to play. Like one time we were doing a musical improv show where we, the title was something about, it was like Lady Gaga goes to Hogwarts or something. And so I opted to play Lady Gaga. So then I don't have to know everything. I'm new. Okay. I'm new to Hogwarts. So, like, that's one strategy is sort of be, like, the new person. Okay. Um, but my sort of least favorite thing is when someone's like, and if someone didn't know what that was, <laughs> that, like, little, <laughs> and it's just like, okay. Like, that, yeah. to me, is tired, and let's retire that. <laughs> Figure out a more clever yeah. way to do that. Yeah. I was just curious how, how it works. kind of a bitch. Way. Let's just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Nate and I have been texting about. <laughs> Side texting. So, forget it. So we wanted to ask a young person about this to see if there's any commonality in our generation. So uh, today I've asked a friend of mine. She is a, a writer and a voice director uh, on the television. Uh, she's written for Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, among others, and she's voice directed for uh, Paw Patrol. Um, and so uh, she's a mom of two girls, one of whom is my goddaughter, and she is a millennial. So let's welcome Mary Jacobson. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. How are you? Hey. I'm great. I also am so happy to be like the young person today. Yeah. That doesn't yes. happen. The other day, somebody called me ma'am at the store, and I ah. said, I don't answer to that. So this was nice. <laughs> so, Mary, we are talking about the, the movie that you can quote on your deathbed. I think, first of all, I don't like to think about my deathbed, mm -hmm. but if I had to do a movie, <laughs> yeah. um, I loved, uh, I still love uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh. Mm. Do, are you guys yeah. familiar with it? Sure. Oh, yeah. I've seen Back it when times. it was still okay for men to dress like women? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he goes, when I cold, hold this cold meat, I think of Winston. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like my favorite quote. <laughs> I love it. And like when I'm making sandwiches for my kids, sometimes I'll say that, like I'll hold the turkey. <laughs> And they have no idea yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> they don't know. Well. But I, I think that's like a comfort movie. And I, yeah. I, I think I was 12 when that came mm. out. Um, and we would get it from the video store, the local one. So okay. it was Not like Blockbuster. Um, Larry's. It was Larry's. <laughs> Larry's so video? Yeah. And would you okay. rent it on a DVD? No. Or VCR? VHS. No. VHS. Oh. VHS. Be, VHS. Oh, be nice. kind. I was, be kind. Rewind. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So we would call on like a Friday to reserve a movie. We'd call and oh, be like, can you hold uh -huh. this movie? Wow. Um, and then I would watch it and then I would rewind it and watch it again. Like it was comfort Aww. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when Robin goes, 
one lump of two in it. The cream, <laughs> the pie, and it's falling. I just love it. I could oh my God. see him as my dad, you know? Like, I love yeah. the montage of him getting transformed into Mr. Yes. Doubtfire with Harvey Firestein. Yeah. And it's uh, Don't Rain on My Parade, I think, is the uh-huh. song that's playing. And then he does, like, little... Uh, Barbara moments. Yes. He has like some little imitations where yes. he does uh he does a yentl hit, I think, at the one yentl. point. He's like, Papa, can you hear me? And, and then he they has, do a matchmaker at one yes. point. Yeah, he when has he has a has scarf the, over his head yeah. like this. He's a voiceover artist, is the his profession in that movie yes. right now. Oh. Uh, and yeah. then then your career led you down that, that road. Oh, you I know. Uh-huh. Look at that. I didn't put it that together. You up. It That's did. why I'm here to make Thank connections. You. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make a phone call. This changes yeah. everything. <laughs> My I dad. Think I've only seen that movie one time. You know, I don't, I, but I, I mean, I remember the trailer. I feel like that's the thing. Maybe I didn't see it. We could Maybe watch it. We should watch it together. We should. Yeah, we you should. should. Ga- gather all our families. I'm ready. Oh. Yes. I got a Coke. I'm ready to go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wait, wait, you were going to say something about your dad, Mary. Oh, so my dad, uh, my parents are divorced, but my dad, that was something, he loved showing the movie to me. Now, in hindsight, I think he showed it to me because he was like, I am i don't get to see you as much. And I was like, are you going to dress Aww. up as Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> like, like, whenever we were together, he's like, look what I brought. But then um, he, there was a contest in my town. There's like a local radio station. Um, and they had a calling for, or a contest to be the, um, a commercial announcer and he almost won and it was to be Mrs. Doubtfire, but like not that, oh. that Mrs. Doubtfire. It was like, like a local pizza spot. They were going to read commercials in Mrs. Doubtfire voice. And so my dad oh, was, nice. yeah. he was the runner up. Yeah, he's, Cause he does a good Mrs. Doubtfire voice. He really did a good Mrs. Doubtfire voice. Hello. I think- that was a big that's the big uh voice like, yeah. hello yeah and then remember he said um he uh sally field goes how did he die your husband and he goes well he, sh- he was hit by a guinness truck it was literally the drink that killed him <laughs> uh, like, there's just little gems and every everything yeah. he yeah. did, he was so smart. Performance wise, like he got to, it really hit his. Like almost feels like they definitely had him in mind when they wrote this script. They had I him, think right? so. Or he made it his own so much, <laughs> right? Yeah, one or the other. yeah. Is, is I this think something so. that you have seen with your family? Have you watched yes. it with them? Yes. And did they uh, like it? What? How did they react? I think we showed it to them probably a little too young, um, okay. because they were like, "Are you guys getting divorced? Like, why are you?" <laughs> <laughs> Like it was, you know, like not, I mean, it was a little like, why are we, it was their first look at divorce, I guess. And so I was like, no, this is just a movie that I think is really fun. And, and, you know, the dad doesn't see his kids, so he dresses up. And then I think they were more sad. So we need to revisit it. Interesting. (laughs) I wonder if like, maybe would you advise that movie to couples who are getting a divorce to play for their kids as a soft way to tell them? (laughs) Yeah, that your we dad have to is going to tell you about first. Yeah. We're going to watch this movie, and then yeah. we're going to have a discussion. And then your okay. nanny is going to be your father. Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah, that's how it, and that's that's usually in real life how it turns out. Oh anyway. yeah, right. almost always, always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so good and it's so funny and it's such a good uh, comedy of errors kind of like farce, you know, with the restaurant scene at the end yeah. where you have to keep switching costumes and and uh, Timothy Dalton, right? No, it's uh, one of the bonds. Here, it was Pierce, uh, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan is so and good. Sally, How dare you? And Sally Fields. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my God! What a cast! What year was this movie? Do we know? I don't even know what year was. Ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah, I knew it yeah. was when I was in college. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, so I was like fifth grade or sixth okay. grade. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm just. I like. <laughs> so you were the age of. No, uh, the older the boy. The middle. I was the boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The middle age who had the twelfth birthday. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Right. Uh, yeah, and he was he's like a he's a what Joey the uh from Blossom's bro- younger brother, I think. Mm, what was that kid's uh, name? Joey Lawrence. Joey, Joey Lawrence's Lawrence. younger brother. I think it's his young I'm pretty sure if I remember and then Mara wow. Wilson was the li- the littlest so one. And then great. the older girl. She did some other movies too, but I don't yeah. remember her name. It'd be um, fun to see what she's up to now. Yeah, Mara Maybe. Wilson like doesn't act at all now. She's Whoa. like, very, I think she's written a book and mm-hmm. uh, she's more circumspect about her. That was childhood. the youngest. That was the youngest girl. Yeah, I think uh, I wanted to be her when I watched that movie. 
I think, I, yeah, I, that's, I that's very cool. I think movies have a big impact on us when there's a character, when we're young and there's a character our age. I remember, like, E.T. came out when I was Elliot. I was Elliot's age. Yeah. Huh? So, Ashley doesn't like me to use my Because image. it's going to bang on the okay. microphone. I'm All just right. trying to help you. So <laughs> we're still working out some kinks here. That's in this, good. It's uh, nice. It's like literally yeah, like banging on the table that the I microphone's sitting on. I'm like, buddy, when I don't know what that, was the noise that's going to make. E.T. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much. I like a movie. <laughs> I have not seen Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm deciding right now. I don't think I've seen it. I I'm just excited gotta watch for you. it. Are None you deciding right it. now that you don't ever want to watch it? <laughs> no, no, no. I've just uh, never uh, uh. seen it up to this point. You gotta have a movie night. Right, yeah, let's do it. We're They'll bring the popcorn. All right. You guys will bring that the popcorn. Good. Yeah. Get- yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that We're like uh, Is that kettle pop or uh, butter? What is it? Nate is a real popcorn. I'm a popcorn chef. person. A popcorn is, Yeah, wow. he is. He wow. he has started making it. He makes it in this huge pot, and he he puts oh. like garlic, like cloves yeah. of garlic, and like oh, that's different uh, level. That he like steams, and then he puts like all these wow. sage and rosemary and, and fennel seeds, and like it's a very like. Like a garden, very tasty. A savory. Yeah, a very, we, that's what we had for supper last night. Was popcorn? Oh, yeah, it's and so this good. is our leftover bag. Now, oh. Mary, when we'll do movie nights, Mary makes this great popcorn in the whirly in the whirly pop. Whirly pop. Have you ever done oh, a whirly nice. pop? No, I don't even know what that is. It's a, like a it's like a metal pot, and then yeah. it has like a like a thing that turns yeah, yeah, yeah. the popcorn inside, and you just kind of oh, cool. just do this for. It takes about forty five minutes or whatever. It's a good just workout. Like constant wow. doing. Oh my this goodness! For forty five. I just use a big old um, stew pot, stock pot. Oh, that's uh, nice. Like a stainless steel stock pot, and uh, I don't. I just you let it sit. Oh. Start it on high, and then turn it to medium after it starts popping, and then once it's half popped, I open the lid so that let the steam out, so it's it stays kind of crisp. And it pops Ooh. all the kernels. And I don't have to shake it or kernels. anything. What? Just, I got my timing down. Oh, yeah. I cover the bottom of the pan in olive oil, so all the kernels are like touching the olive oil. Yes. And then when it's done, I pour the popcorn into a big bowl, and then throw the butter into the hot pot. So oh, the butter oh. melts in the hot pot. And it gets up all that extra, like, whatever is left in there from my seasonings. And mm. uh, then I pour it over the popcorn. And, then, you and, guys... then, and you get these little, like, great pieces of garlic throughout. Oh, do you that guys are, like, put... steamed and sweet. Do you put junior mints on top of your popcorn? There's a, there's a theater in L.A. called Dynasty Typewriter that I went to recently. And someone got, you can get popcorn from there. And what they do is, it's just regular buttered popcorn. They put like a layer of popcorn in, and then you get to choose what candies you want, and they sprinkle oh, them in. Dude. Then they put another layer of popcorn, sprinkled candies, wow, and geez. you can pick what you want. Wow. I didn't know this. Wow, I want to go back so bad because I didn't get it, and that guy wasn't sitting by me because I would have reached in, and I know oh. not well, not well enough to like just reach my hand in his popcorn. Why but not? <laughs> well, it almost feels like we veered into somebody else's podcast for a few minutes about <laughs> maybe it was solve for Pop X or something. It was just a whole popcorn. It was a centric. mashup. It was we great, did get though. very popcorn centered. <laughs> so yeah. That's okay. Mary, yeah. thank you so much for thank you, uh, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thanks thank for having you. Appreciate me. it. So oh, great oh. to see you. I, we may have met you at the pit somewhere along the line in the past. This Good is to see lovely. You again. Yeah. And we'll, it's meet proper. It's meeting proper. Yeah. I like it. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, also, we'll see you for movie night then. Okay. All right. So I've got this. Is it time? You're drawing for Nate. I'm going to draw for Nate. Cool. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. Right. Are we ready to see what Let's next, do it. What's going to be? Uh, what what did you put, like, everything, all I of our suggestions in I put a lot there? of them in there. And I, I yeah, I did put, uh, so I've got one. It's right here. Oh, my God. Is, I did put most of them in there. Okay. This is called The Sanctity of Breakfast Cereal. Ooh. Favorite cereals, cereal commercials, mascots. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so that's what it is. It's about uh, about breakfast cereals. Nice. I love it. When we were growing up. Oh my God! Yes. Sound I like a good so topic, Nate? Many. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm it. excited about that one. Breakfast, I can talk about cereal. breakfast cereal. all Yeah. Day. This nice. is Ashley's wheelhouse for sure. All right. Well, we'll see you next time then. All, all right. right. Thanks. Special thanks to Mary Jacobson for being on the show today. Solve for Gen X is mixed and edited by Nate Starkey. The theme song was written by Nate Starkey and Matt Vogel and performed by the Mighty Weekly. Our podcast art was created by Dave Holtine at DaveHoltineDesign.com. You can find Solve for Gen X wherever you listen to podcasts. And it's 
also available to watch on YouTube. Just search Solve for Gen X. If you're so inclined, please rate and review our show. It really helps our visibility. Or whatever. 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 Solve for Gen X is a welcome, welcome Matt and Mary, Nate, and Ashley production. production.